afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ulysses Sperandio, and I am the president of Bratec. Bratec stands for Brazil, Texas Chamber of Commerce. And Bratec's objective is the promotion and advancement of commercial trade and investment between Brazil and the state of Texas, the entry door to the United States market. This is done by ways of seminars, conferences, meetings, missions, publications, educational and social activities, and throughout 2020 and 2021 uh, by webinars, which we used a lot uh, through, throughout the pan pandemic and, and is still using, and we're gonna continue using going forward. Uh, similarly, we also support the US companies based in Texas interested in doing business in Brazil by our network of companies who are part of the Bratec family. We rely on our extensive network of member companies that can provide the necessary support to start your business in the US, such as law firms, accounting houses, immigration support, and also physical space like offices and warehouses so that your company can start in Texas. Similarly, we provide the same support for companies from the US interested in going to Brazil. Additionally, Bratec can provide access to an extensive network of organizations and companies based in Texas, such as the Brazilian General Consulate in Houston, the office of the Texas governor, the AMCHAN, which is the American Chamber of Commerce, the Greater Houston Partnership, and the Port of Houston. The major oil and gas companies, such as ExxonMobil, Chevron, Total Energies, BP, Schlumberger, Schuest, and many others to list here. We also have access, and they are part of our board, uh, major law firms based in Houston and Brazil. Uh, we are celebrating in 2021 Bratec's 20th anniversary. That means 20 years of promoting and supporting both business communities of Brazil and Texas, and by extension, the US uh, companies and communities. Expanding and maintaining our bilateral business we also provide great many opportunities for networking among our members. We are continu continuously expanding Bratex support beyond the EMP portion of the oil and gas sector, reaching as far as the space exploration, our next frontier. We are also proud to announce our partnership with Brazil Mata Virgem, oh, sorry, Brazil Mata Viva, BMV, allowing us to offset the environmental impact of our annual operations, including our events by protecting native forests. This offset is much more than only offsetting our carbon emissions and footprint. Bratec leads the way by setting the example and ensuring that these events that we provide, provide a positive impact to the environment. This means that all those who attend our events are contributing to protect our native forests, producing ecosystemic services that are beneficial to the planet, such as fauna and flora diversity, hydrologic flow, properties of the soil, and sustaining the communities near the forest, among many others. Today, Today's objective is to show Brazil Mata Viva approach to diversity into business, which is addressing the three letters of the ESG, environmental, social, and governance, which is now in the forefront of major business communities and companies. Today, we'll discuss a successful way to a more responsible business practice where your company can offset its environmental impact, increase its assets, finance its sustainability policies, promote regional development, and add the value of sustainability to your products and services, as well as to your brand. 
using forest credit, the way to become net positive, which is our webinar theme for this afternoon. Today, we will have three great speakers who will no doubt impact you. I will start with Maria Teresa Umbelino, who is the CEO and founder of BMV Standard. Then we have Luisa Berti Toscan, Sustainability Business Coordinator at SGS. Then Fabian Gonçalves, Business Manager at SGS. We'll start with Maria Teresa Umbelino. Maria Teresa has a degree in economy from the Catholic University of Goiás and a master's in business management, development of financial products and risk analysis. She was the president of the Regional Economic Council in Goiás in 2001. She was a university teacher between 2001 and 2004 at Potiguar University. In 2007, Maria Teresa established the Brazil Mata Viva program in Brazil dedicated to forest protection and generation of environmental assets. Maria Teresa is an advocate of the sustainability causes globally and of the protection of native forests to preserve the ecosystems by generating a source of income for the forest landowners. She has been praised by several Brazilian and international publications for her efforts and achievements in this matter. Maria Teresa, could you please go ahead? Obrigada. Ficou muito mais fácil depois da fala do, do senhor Ulisses, né, do presidente aí, que eu agradeço aí a oportunidade de apresentar e, o, e a, a, a brilhante iniciativa e essa oportunidade para nós. Então, é, eu vou procurar aqui, direcionar, aqui, contar muito mais a nossa história aí, né? que o BMV nasceu exatamente em é, 2007, com a visão de, dessa, da necessidade de solucionar dois problemas, que é criar uma solução para a conservação é, a florestal, que precisa realmente reconhecer a importância do trabalho das pessoas na conservação e, de um outro lado, é, a necessidade das empresas engajarem de uma forma segura e de uma forma transparente que ela conseguisse demonstrar resultados. Então, com a visão desses dois problemas, nós partimos desde 2007 a construir desde ciência até desenvolver um produto, o produto UCS, que é o produto da conservação de, da floresta, e, que, e, a, e a utilidade dele é exatamente é ser consumido para as empresas, por empresas, para adotarem isto como prática SG. E, e também desenvolvemos a ferramenta por ser um, um, um produto que vem da conservação de floresta, a UCS, nós desenvolvemos a ferramenta, a inovação tecnológica de, de, de acesso dessas empresas a consumir esse produto como uma prática de sustentabilidade ambiental, uma prática de sustentabilidade social e de governança. Então, essa ferramenta ela facilita o acesso e, além de, de facilitar o acesso à empresa a ter uma prática é, é, confiável, a exemplo do que a própria SGS atesta e verifica esse processo, onde a empresa tem a segurança de utilizar esse produto, consumir esse produto como prática, que é um instrumento de mercado onde a empresa investe na conservação e, de um outro lado, tá tendo, é, tem vários outros fatores positivos que ela gera ao adotar a prática de investir na UCS. O CS é Unidade de Crédito de Sustentabilidade, ou seja, a partir de, 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 uma, de uma prática de, de verificação científica, 
construiu-se esse produto e transformou-se esse, esse produto em um instrumento de mercado para que as empresas, com essa tecnologia de, de, de aquisição, de acesso, ela calcula aí sim a sua pegada e adquire as UCS é, em equivalência a esta pegada ecológica é, que ela identifica a partir desse aplicativo. E ser ESG, esse caminho ESG, é, hoje é encarado muito mais além da, dos limites da empresa. Então, não basta hoje ser neutro, ser zero. O mundo hoje, principalmente após a pandemia, é, pede que, 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 que as empresas tenham iniciativas que é, saiam, sejam, extrapolem as suas, aos seus limites. Ela precisa fazer mais para a sociedade. E esse produto ele facilita este acesso das empresas. Então, e isto o mundo já vem demonstrando, não é da agora, mas é, com a pandemia isso acelerou, é, que é, e, e isso direcionou o capital de uma forma geral, direcionou-se para estas, para estas iniciativas. Então, nosso objetivo é é facilitar para que o mundo é, invista na conservação da biodiversidade. Então, esta é a prática que o mundo precisa. Então, nós criamos esta, esta facilidade. Então, ah, o aplicativo é essa inovação. E isto nós já temos aí várias empresas, várias instituições no Brasil e internacionais que já adotaram a utilização das UCS, adotaram a certificação S de do BMV por meio do, do aplicativo como como uma prática e para isto elas já já vem vem tendo ganho esse é o objetivo levar para a empresa a sustentabilidade não como ônus e sim como uma grande vantagem que ela tem de trazer, de, de ter acesso aí a, a uma questão de, de, dessa facilidade, desses benefícios de crédito. A exemplo, nós temos um caso muito interessante da Mina Tucano, que ela foi selo no primeiro ano e no segundo ano ela foi novamente adotou o selo e agora ela já está na prática de buscar no mercado, de lançar o papel com o carimbo é, é, SD do BMV. Então, vários benefícios, é, o fato de adotar isto como prática, usar a UCS, usar o produto é, que é gerado a partir da aplicação do standard BMV como um produto, uma prática, ESG, então o que acontece com isso? A empresa alcança uma série de benefícios. Esse, essa é, a, é, a, é, a, é o objetivo é, desse produto que nós desenvolvemos e, do, e da tecnologia que facilita o acesso deste produto. Então, a, o BMV surge com isso e já está numa fase de expansão é, de, de fronteiras, a exemplo da iniciativa junto com a Bratec de levar isto ao, aos Estados Unidos, à Europa, é, exatamente é, levar a, a, a condição de investir na biodiversidade por meio do produto UCS. Então, muito obrigada pelo evento em si. Obrigada. Estou à disposição para perguntas, para as dúvidas aí. Allow me to introduce you both before you start. So we will move to Luisa Berti Toscan and Fabio Gonzalez, uh, bom, perdão, Gonçalves, who will present as a team. I will start with Luisa's summarized bio. Luisa is a chemical engineer has worked for more than five years with sustainability and environmental services. She has a postgraduate degree in sustainability by FGV, Fundação Getúlio Vargas, 
and Business Management by ESPM. Working with SGS, Luisa is responsible for development of ESG certification and consultancy solutions and carbon management projects. Fabian Gonçalves is a chemical engineer and technician in industri industrial chemistry, lead auditor of the climate change program at SGS and a product coordinator of the SGS climate change program with over 15 years of experience in climate change projects, acting as sustainability business manager at SGS. So Luisa and Fabian, could you please go ahead? So just a, just a quick introduction about SGS. SGS, to understand a little bit about SGS, uh, SGS is the world's leading inspection, testing and certification company. Uh, acting more than 80 countries around the world uh, with more than 89,000 employees uh, with a different services in different areas uh, for the industry, service, etc. Um, SGS also considered the, the sustainability uh, not only as a service that we can offer to the market, but as just considers the sustainability team as part of our business. So we are listed in some, in some indices like Dow Jones, uh, CDP, Ecovadis, Carbon Neutral, to reflect that as just is not only selling sustainability service, but also doing this internally. This is part of a strategic plan. Uh, also, uh, I'd like to, to mention something about, about the carbon market. I started to work in SGS in 2005. This was the beginning of the carbon credit market, uh, not only in Brazil, but in, in all parts of the globe for the, for the CDM projects. So I started in SGS to develop this market here and that's just globally assuming uh, 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 to be one of the, the biggest val validation and verification company for this kind of project, carbon credit projects. And, and we worked on this in the, in the regulated and also in the voluntary market for the carbon credit until 2010, 2011. Uh, and after that, we start to, to expand our, our service to other sustainability solutions. Um, and more recently, in the recent years, this market has started to grow again, especially in Brazil, considering the, our market, the capacity that Brazil has, especially when we talk about carbon credits, about the forests, uh, so we have a huge potential for, for, for products again. And this market after 2010, as I mentioned in 2011, has decreased a lot, especially in Brazil. And now it's, as I mentioned, is growing again. So when we started to discuss this partnership with BMV, uh, this was completely aligned with the strategy of HGS about the ESG team. And, and also we, to continue our experience, our previous experience in the carbon credit market together with BMV program and also the, the ESG, the environmental, social and governance team that is, that is so popular now that, that we can say. Uh, so the opportunity, the, the, the positive thing about PNV program, it's about the, that we mentioned that this is a high quality carbon credit because it's a carbon credit, not only for the CO2 issue, uh, all aspects of the environmental and also for the social part is, uh, it's considering on this. So because, so this is something different from the, uh, a normal or regular carbon credit project that, you, that we can find in the market. 
So BNV has something more. Né? They added more value to, to this program. So they have about 27 co-benefits that can be measured and also verified. Um, uh, in, in SGS, our approach and, and our partnership with, uh, with BMV is specifically for the certification part. So SGS globally is it's a company basically for certification. We started work in the past with the UNFCCC and also the voluntary market uh, and recent working with GAG inventories and other kind of carbon credit projects. And so in this program, in this in the platform of the BMV, SGS is working to assure, to verify, to audit the process uh, of, of emissions. So the companies inside the system, they can present your GAG inventory, your impact in terms of CO2, uh, and SGS will audit this. So SGS will assure that this information is correct and the, the amount of CO2 emissions uh, refer to the amount of of credit or UCS, the credit that this company needs to buy to compensate um, your emissions. So all this process is 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 being controlled and registered inside this this system and this platform. So uh, it's important to mention that SGS is using your expertise in certification in order to assure that this that this process. Uh, is being correct and the emissions is correct. Um, I think now Luisa will complement with some information. Yes, hi everyone, yeah. this is Luisa. Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about the benefits and the relation of the credits with the ESG agenda. Uh, Fabian told you a little bit about uh, how we certificate that our, your impact is really compensated by buying the forest credits, but it's also much more than that. And we know that the ESG agenda has uh, grown and has, um, has had more attention from the financial markets. Uh, very important people, one of the most uh, known one being Larry Fink, that we have a quote here. Uh, saying advocating for sustainability and uh, looking for not only financial uh, benefits or not uh, advocating that companies uh, can no longer look only to the bottom line, but also uh, consider non-financial topics, ESG topics, and uh, look for uh, uh, ESG impacts, risks, and externalities. And this can also affect how the company is perceived by the financial markets. So it's very relevant, very uh, relevant for all stakeholders. The financial, corporate, and regulations—they are all um, trying to implement the ESG agenda. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about how these uh, credits are part of a, a more, a more uh, systematic uh, ESG um, uh, strategy for a company. Fabian, can you uh, can you go go through the slide? Yeah. So uh, we know that when you're talking about sustainability, uh, it's a very complex subject and there is no one right, right answer. We have to take uh, complementary actions uh, to get you know, to, to where we want for uh, sustainable development. And each sector, industrial sector, have uh, their own material issues and their own challenges. But uh, compensating is something that all the sectors can do while other sustainability agenda are also being implemented. So you can mitigate the risks that you already have by compensating. And that's when we talk about uh, the forest credits from BMV being net positive. We are beyond carbon. Uh, we are talking about investing in a compensating strategy that um, gives you positive outcomes. So here I, I brought you some, some aspects, some uh, benefits in the environmental, social and governance aspect. 
Uh, I think the environmental one is the most, uh, the, the easier one to, to understand. But I also want to emphasize that there's very uh, strong benefits, uh, social benefits for these projects. And the, uh, the BMV uh, team is looking very closely that the projects are, that there are issuing credits. They are looking for food production. They are looking for motor regional development and conservation, of course, of the areas. Uh, which the projects are are done and we won't have time here to go uh, through each one of these aspects but uh, i also i want to emphasize that this is a very broad strategy and the company that chooses to invest in something like this it's uh doing doing good and compensating its impact but also promoting promoting change and promoting sustainability uh for the last one fabian please just uh, to end our our presentation from SGS, uh, we want to emphasize that we are a global team, a company that has expertise in auditing, as Fabian said, but also in sustainability in carbon projects. So we'll be uh, available for answers uh, later on, but it, it's a very short presentation, but we wanted to uh, make sure you understand some of the benefits uh, apart from the carbon and environmental ones, but also from uh, thinking about uh, ESG and sustainability uh, business strategy. Um, I think that's it for, for us for now. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Luisa and Fabian. Uh, it was an excellent presentation. Uh, let's move on. Right now, uh, we are starting our Q&A session. I'll be moderating this part of the event. So starting, we can start here with a question uh, for uh, SG, SGS, uh, Luis or Fabian. So how is the ESG impact from BMV certification projects measured? So how can companies actually see what they are buying? What is the, comp uh, the, the impacts are being you know, measured? You want to take this one, Fabian? Uh, let me see you so we can both complement each other okay. <laughs> uh, the, the fact is that when when you buy the the credits the ucs credits in the system so the whole process is is verified and audited so this is so you are secure that this this credit is okay correct and and behind this credit uh, you have the company has the information where does come from the area the forest the 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 social part behind this so this information is available so the, this is something that will be clear and transparent for the for the companies buying this kind of product yeah. and also it's all registered in a blockchain, in the um, blockchain platform yeah. uh, there's two uh, steps of the registration. One is the uh, is the, the 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 emission of the credits, and then you have all the information about uh, where the project com project project comes from, and everything that is involved in the project. And the other uh, step is uh, the compensating registration. Then uh, you can see uh, what's the company footprint and how mu how many uh, UCS they bought to compensate that. Thank you. And does the forest projects also consider reforestation credits? They can consider, but it's mainly a conservation of forests that uh, allows the emission of the credits. Uh, so it's, it's a very important uh, financial instrument that uh, BMV created uh, to maintain the forests uh, how they are, the natural environment and the biodiversity as it is. Uh, so Maria Teresa, so we've been talking about the reforestation credits and everything, but is government regulation mandatory for the companies to have an ESG policy and, and for extension, you know, to uh, want to have BMV forest credits. So is it necessary? Is it mandatory? Não é mandatório por parte de governos, e sim 
é, é, uma, é, uma, é uma exigência hoje, é um critério do mercado para até para investir. É, então, para investir, é, o, hoje está o SG, o SG, hoje está no valor das empresas. Então, o valuation das empresas hoje está muito ligado ao SD, mas não é mandatório. Uh, so, does BMD can I, can provide... I mention? Oh, sure. Sorry. For just, so, sorry, just one compliment. Uh, we can see that the, the, the financial market, the banks and this kind of entities, they are pushing this theme of ESG. So, Uh, companies in the future, not in the future now, in some cases now, to get access to finance. So they need to, to present your actions about ESG. Uh, so this is a reality now. So it's, so it's, not, some, it's not mandatory, but it's necessary. <laughs> let me add, let me add some, uh, some comments to that. Mm -hmm. So governments have not yet come up with mandatory regulations for this, but they will, they will very shortly. What they are waiting for is for the companies to be proactive and do it themselves, because this is typically how things go, right? Once enough momentum in the companies are already achieved and the government sees the trend going that way, they will apply this in Brazil and in the US and in Europe. In Europe, you probably already see some of those being applied, right? Because you, we see that the, te the theme of environmental concern and environmental responsibility is moving far, further, uh, faster than we expected, actually. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with what has happened in Exxon and Shell, where the board members, shareholders, forced Exxon and Shell to bring their objectives for reducing carbon emissions to 2030 instead of 2050, because let's face it, right? 2050, everybody who is agreeing with those objectives are not going to be here. They're going to be retired. So it's easy to commit to 2050, but when you push people to commit to 2030, that's a different story. That's nine years from now, eight, right? I mean, if you count in that, we almost finished 2009. Well, no, Anyway, I mean, it's coming. The other thing that we've seen, actually, one of our clients came to us and said, you know, the reason he started looking at uh, forest credit is that the banks, they, you know, they were trying to get a finance for a project involved oil and gas. And uh, actually, it wasn't a, a bank, it was an investment fund, because as you know, investment funds are now bigger in some cases than banks. And investment and said, what do you want? Ah, project for oil and gas. Ah, forget about it. We're not investing in any dirty business. That's how they, they call it. So uh, now having this conservation on the side, while well, you, you compensating for what is called dirty business, right? It's not really dirty, but hey, I mean, that's the perception. Uh, so I think there is a momentum now uh, everybody's getting in the bandwagon of uh, adopting forest credit And the, the later you leave to start making a policy in your company, you know, the further behind you will be. Um, so that's my two cents. So uh, thank you, Ulysses. And also uh, uh, making a small comment about everything you said, we also know that we are very much concentrated in the, in, in the stretch of, you know, the carbon emissions, you have uh, COP26 right now happening, right? You have the Paris Agreement, but, and so there is a lot of momentum and you see there's a lot of momentum for carbon credits. So why, why forest credits and not carbon credits? What is the difference here? What is the advantage? Why should, as we know that forest credits are even more expensive than carbon credits. So why should a company decide to invest in, in, in buying forest credits instead of carbon credits? Uh, and I open for everyone on the floor here. Yeah, I'll take a shot at that first, and then I'll, I'll let my colleagues to uh, put in their, their comments after I, I take my first answer. So, well, first of all, we have to clarify that one US, UCS or one forest credit is equal to one ton of carbon, of CO2. So let's, let's make sure that we are 
you know, comparing bananas with bananas, right? It's one forest credit e equals to one ton of carbon. So why carbon is not so great? I'll tell you why it's not so great. Well, I feel that it's based on the future. What they promise to you is they say, okay, we're gonna plant or reforest, which is, um, I don't wanna use the word, but it's not really true when you say you're gonna reforest an area, right? It's very hard to reforest. You can plant a whole bunch of trees and they're all the same type of tree and you don't get the rest of the environment and the species and the fauna and the flora and the rivers. You, you don't really reforest, right? You plant a bunch of trees. Now you plant that bunch of trees on a certain space. And then you say, I promise you that I'm gonna keep these trees here for 20 years or 30 years, right? And you pay me now and just hope for the best that I'll keep these trees here and nothing will happen in this area for 30 or, or 20 years. And then they have to go look for another area to plant trees again when they try to sell it next year because it's one time sale, right? Um, also, uh, when you do that, it's based on only carbon sequestration, it's only trees. I mean, you don't benefit anything else. And let's face it, before we start thinking about planting trees, we should also thinking about not cutting forests down, right? I mean, if we, if we, we say, ah, we only gonna plant trees, let's cut the rest of the forest. <laughs> We're gonna have to compensate for that too. And it's never gonna be the same. So it's a bit, I, I mean, to me, in my humble logic, I would try to first keep what we have before we go and plant, right? New stuff. And, and I think that's where we should start with the forest. So also there is a limited amount of credits you get in a carbon where in the forest you get, there is more space, there is more credits you get per area, right? And it can be negotiated a product as a product itself. And also you're saving 27 ecosystem services, which are part of the Paris Accord and part of what's going forward in terms of agreement in uh, keeping the environment. Uh, now, what the forest credit is, is what has it been kept this year? This is like planting uh, um, a crop, right? If you are the landowner and you plant a crop, at the end of the year, you cut your crop and you sell your crop. Similar with the forest. You have the forest at the end of the year, there is, is an, an audit is made that the forest is there. And according to all the criteria that the forest should have to be considered intact and kept in pristine play, uh, uh, situation, it's, it's giving a certain number of forest credit at the end of the year and you buy that, that means you bought the crop or you bought the forest, but the forest is obviously not cut. Now, next year, they're only gonna get the money for keeping the forest or the credits if they keep the forest. Whereas in the carbon uh, capture or the carbon sequestration by planting trees, next year, who knows what can happen to those trees? Or in five years from now, there is a fire, the trees are burned, and hey, there goes what you have paid for your credits. And the forest, no, it's after the fact, it's at the end of the year. And it, it, it's, it's in conjunction with how people report their emissions. Because the companies now, they have their balance sheet and their annual statement where they report how much emissions they released during that year. And then, of course, at the same time, you can say, okay, but I bought so much forest credit to compensate for my emissions. So it kind of matches, right? Timing-wise and number-wise, I think is a brilliant system. So... Uh, Luisa, Maria Teresa, Fabian, please feel free to add comments. É, é, é muito difícil depois dessa explanação acrescentar alguma coisa. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. I want I want to comment something just to complement that uh, also it's a it's a smart economic uh, incentive for this activity that it's, it's it is an economic activity of conserving and keeping uh, the forest uh, alive and uh, not cutting them down so uh, and besides uh, you can uh, disclosure the the carbon uh, compensation but also uh, the social benefits as i talked before 
uh, like um, increasing income, uh, generating uh, jobs, uh, food production, and you can disclosure in your sustainability reports, GRI or other uh, standards and ESG reports. So uh, you can add the, the carbon, the, the carbon aspect with other benefits that uh, it's also uh, appropriate and it, it can also benefit the company uh, image and uh, the, state, the sustainability statement. Eu, eu quero só complementar uma pequena coisa, que o objetivo do produto, da criação do produto, é que se permitisse a, a, a expansão da atividade econômica e o crédito de floresta, ele, ele, traz, ele, ele tem uma produção natural dele, a floresta é dinâmica e ela vai produzindo o serviço em equivalência que eu preciso expandir a minha atividade econômica, porque é, é ilusão pensar que temos que parar petróleo, mineração, nós podemos adotar práticas é, mais eficazes. Mas, a, mantendo a floresta, ela, ela tem aquela dinâmica de estar fornecendo serviço. Então, este mecanismo é uma forma de poder expandir a atividade econômica conciliada com a conservação e a manutenção da, da, da floresta. Então, a biodiversidade é mantida e os serviços ecossistêmicos também em uma equivalência da, da expansão produtiva. Thank you. So uh, just continue with you, Maria Teresa. So considering all in that, does BMV provide guidance and support for the companies that want to use forest credits so they can understand better, you know, how they can use these credits, the advantages, uh, how they can present there, like in their balance sheets, as Liz is told. Can you say a little bit more about that? Esse é exatamente outro diferencial do BMV porque além dele, dele assessorar a empresa nesta, não só na comunicação, como ela ganhar com, com, com esse, esse ativo. E, e, ela, e a vantagem é, desse, de, desse mecanismo é que ele possibilita uma transparência das empresas demonstrarem a realidade da política, os resultados da, 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 da política de sustentabilidade que ela tem, que hoje é uma exigência até de regulações a exemplo da União Europeia. Ela hoje é, é, necessi, ela está tá no caminho da exigência da comprovação do ganho, dos ganhos ecossistêmicos é, da sua ação ESG. E, e por esse mecanismo é possível atender a este critério. É, não vamos longe do, da, da grande discussão da, das iniciativas, do próprio, é, da efetividade das ações das empresas em sustentabilidade. Então, o propósito do BMV é facilitar este acesso a transmitir, a evidenciar essas informações. Uh, thank you. So, no balanço. <laughs> thank you, Maria Teresa. But uh, and are all the credits generated in Brazil? Can can they be generated in other countries? So, how would that work, right? You know, in Brazil and other countries, how they'll be generated? É, o protocolo de, de, de geração desses ativos ele é replicável em todos, em todos os patrimônios naturais, tá? tanto é, é, florestas tropicais como tundra, como, enfim, todo aquele elemento de patrimônio natural é possível originar esses ativos. E ele foi desenvolvido exatamente para isso. Ele é um estándar global para a conservação é, de, 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 de vários elementos da natureza. É yeah, reconhecido internacionalmente. Exatamente. E, é um, e, e são protocolos que obedecem a critérios de avaliação 
global. Então, ele é possível replicar em, toda, em todos os biomas, em todas, inclusive, que já é uma iniciativa, é, na equivalência, por exemplo, da proteção do oceano, a UCS de água, de oceano, é, é, ela tem a mesma equivalência da conservação, oceano, conservação de floresta. Então, ele é possível aplicar em todo patrimônio natural. Thank you. Uh, uh, so just one uh, question here for Lisa. So you have this whole history, right, in the oil and gas business. So what made you shift to promoting forest credits? Like, can you show us a little bit from your side of this shift and why this is happening now? Well, uh, it's because I it's the first time I see a process that works because I've been hearing about conserve, preserving the forest in Brazil for many years, right? Since I was uh, a younger man, right? Let's put it that way. And uh, uh, there was a lot of conversation about how Brazil should keep its forest and other places should keep its forests. I uh, know you guys keep your forests, and we, but we will develop our countries and you guys keep your forests. Now we're going to send you some money, which we quite, don't quite know where the, this money is going to go because it goes to the government and the government is like a black box, right? You say, oh, God knows what they're going to use that money for. So I think there was a lot of, you know, mistrust in the way that, okay, how do I know you're keeping your forest? How do I know if I give you money, the money is going to go to the right people or the right places? Uh, And now BMV has come up with a methodology that works because the landowners are landowners that have their lands, they have titles in their lands, so they are the proper landowners. So the, the money does not go to the government, goes to the people who have the land and the people who are protecting the forest and the people who are auditing to make sure the forest is there and also goes to the community and local people that live around that forest or you know need the forest to survive without destroying it so it's a it's a perfect combination where you're addressing the main drivers of a system and keeping the forest so i do believe is a is a great product is the first time i see a, a proposition that actually can work in the business world and now you can use that economically You can use that to put um, uh, labels in your, in your products and services and say, look, we are environmentally concerned, responsible, and we're keeping this forest. And well, coming from the sales and marketing like I come, I know even how to sell this at a higher price for your, your, your clients than not preserving the forest. I'll give you an example, for instance. I actually gave that example to BP. Uh, we are talking to BP about this. And I said, listen, why don't you go in your gas pumps and you say, okay, this, this gasoline here has forest credits to compensate for our footprint. Now, if you buy this gasoline here, which costs perhaps four cents more, or two cents more or whatever, I don't know, you have to come to a number, but it, it will be a few cents more. You're helping uh, preserving the forest. I mean, not everybody at first will buy that, but there is a considerable amount of people who may buy that gasoline. So there is a way for you to monetize uh, this initiative and being uh, environmentally responsible. And that's the reason I join in and I see this is a great uh, offering and, 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 a, and a sustainable uh, process that can work in the business world. Thank you, Ulysses. So uh, thank you everyone for your participation in our event today. We come to the end of our Q&A session. I, I give the word to Ulysses for our final closing remarks. Thank you very much for our speakers and our attendees. Ulysses, you have the floor. Okay, well, before I close, I would like to show you something. So this is me walking the talk, right? Mm -hmm. So I have compensated my footprint by having a CEO of uh, a sustainability stamp. This is what the translation of this is in English, right? Not CEO, CEO is something else. This is a sustainability stamp where I have a number, I have a one forest credit, 
That's what I have here is enough to compensate for my footprint. And here is the little neck of the wood that I'm saving, help to preserve. And this is uh, what I'm preserving. It's 13.16 uh, square meters. For the English system, that would be 141.6 square foot that I'm preserving. And I'm saving one ton of CO2, and I'm saving stored wood. I'm helping keep the fauna and flora in place. And this is the, the numbers you see there is the amount of uh, flora and fauna that I'm preserving and helping preserve the rivers. And uh, it kind of makes me feel really good that I, I'm helping the, the, the system and I'm contributing to keep the planet doing my part. Okay, that's what I wanted to share. So I would like to thank all the participants, all the panelists, uh, Maria Teresa, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Luisa and Fabian, thank you so much for your presentations. Uh, thank you to all our members who are attending this uh, presentation and for your participation. I thank our audience as well without you, we wouldn't be here. So it's important to have you attending our events. And if you are interested in what you see, we can come and explain more details and show the process that we, we use to calculate how much forest credits you should need, how you can be uh, more environmentally responsible and how you can present this in your balance sheet so we can help you with that. We have a process for that and we will be available if you contact us uh, for a follow-up on this presentation. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.